Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of Chewing the Fat. Been a long time since I've had Ian Kilby with me. <laughs> Feels like forever. Unlike a lot of the other people I've spoken to in the last few weeks, you look exactly the same as I, you did when I last spoke to you. <laughs> like weeks ago, days ago, hours ago. <laughs> it, it didn't matter, however long ago. <laughs> a few of the people I've spoken to this week, I'm like, who the hell is this? Totally different people. What's been going yeah, on? I've been watching those. Great job, by the way. Thanks. I'm thinking, man, what are, you're just going to go go through all my clients one by one. <laughs> None of them have complained about me yet, though. That's good. They, I sit there waiting for it. I wait. Oh, Dean's just such a harsh prick. And they're recorded. Blah, it never comes. They're recorded. Sorry? They're recorded. So I just say before I start the recording, yeah. I just say just whatever you need to say about Dean, say it now. <laughs> you know, Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of picking him at random though i'm like oh god is he gonna pick someone that just really doesn't like me <laughs> what's been happening man i've been busy i mean you know obviously the the gosh i'll look back what has it been five months now mm. since you know, everything changed and I created Simpler Health. And, you know, I think people relate to Simpler Health, like it, it's established and it's been around forever and all that. Literally made it up five months ago, you know, to, to address a need. Mm. And, it's, and it's not just address a need that I saw in the moment. It's something I've been committed to a, for a long time. But Simpler Health is kind of you know, the, the, everything's coming together in the right kind of context and in a way that can actively make a difference in people's lives right now, not in 10 years, 20 years time when we figure out all the science. It's like, how do we bring together what we currently know and do it in a way that really empowers people? And, and then how do I learn from the journey of those clients along the way? Mm -hmm. And then listen, it's like, you know, it's, 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 it, everyone wants to know what, what's their gig in life. You know, what's my thing? What am I supposed to be doing here on planet earth? And, you know, it's a whole other level to kind of just stop for a moment and, and stop being so obsessed with your own wants and needs and, you know, your personality and your identity and, and just kind of put your, what's the saying, put your ear to the grindstone and, and listen with regards to what's actually wanted and needed. And, as I've been coaching people and working with people, I can hear like, what do they start to get committed to? And, you know, you, you take them through this journey. I mean, it starts with like, you know, phone call at one woman, she rang me up. I go, this is hilarious. I said, so, you know, what are you dealing with? What can I help you with? She goes, I'm not dealing with anything. I'm just fat. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Right. I said, thanks. For being straight, we can just get you know to it now. And 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 the and the point was even that she was unwell and overweight and all of that sort of stuff. She wasn't even dealing with that up until that phone call, which was just extraordinary. And and then you know that's where it starts. But then people start producing the results rapidly. You know, as you experience, and you start learning. You get your head around the science. You get your head around your own machinery all the stuff that's got in the way all the barriers and and then at some point you start getting committed to and invested in wow this thing's getting well like this machine this skin bag this body of mine is actually getting well and I'm feeling more vital and alive and, and what am I going to get up to and then and then what else is in the way is it my achy joints is it holy crap, now I'm getting all this attention from people and I want to pay attention to my presentation. I want to look after my skin and I want to dress nicely. I haven't invested for years in a, in a wardrobe that actually works for me in my life and my commitments. And, you know, I, I want to get out there, but I've got no confidence now. How can I cause a breakthrough in, in being uh, myself, you know, with... And, and have confidence when I don't have all those layers of fat protecting me from the threat that life is. And so with regards to that, that end of the journey with Simpler Health, I've been busy 
putting together an expert panel of lifestyle advisors, you know, and, and then it's like when people want to make a difference to the other ailments that maybe they've been in putting up with chronic pain conditions for a long time. It's like, what else is available now? And, you know, so I've been working with the team at CellGen as the, sci the biotech scientific advisor, and, and it's incredibly exciting as well. Mm. So <clears throat> we should get some of those heaps, panel people on. Sorry? We should get some of those panel people on the, the, from the yeah. advisory panel. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I've got my clinical advisors. I mean, they're just amazing and doctors and physiotherapists, clinical nutritionists, psychologists. Um, my scientific advisors include uh, obesity, metabolic disease experts, experts in skeletal muscle metabolism, um, neurobiologists. I mean, I share a lot of Kristen Willemere's posts on Facebook mm -hmm. as well. And she's just, you know, she's amazing. And then um, I've got, even got an environmental microbiologist, Cameron Jones, Dr. Jones, like, uh, you know, Indiana Jones. Oh, Dr. Jones. So <laughs> don't, don't, I know where your head's going. <laughs> I'm not Chinese, I'm Filipino. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we'll do interviews with them. I'll do interviews with them and I, I tell you what, it'd be really cool because I've got these lifestyle advisors as well, who like, you know, martial arts experts and strength and conditioning coaches. And it'd be great to get conversations with them together with the scientists and, you know, because they're going to engage in conversations and, and stuff will emerge from that that would never emerge just me speaking to them or, yeah. you know what I mean? So I think that's going to be incredibly exciting for the Simpler Health members um, and that content will be, you know, available to, the, to our members and so forth. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do to make as much as we can available to the public as well. But, mm. yeah, exciting times, man. Cool. That's pretty cool. And you've been busy too. Yeah, I've been pretty busy. <laughs> been busy um, with my bike stuff as well as um, helping you out. And, uh, oh, he's on the wines. Um, <laughs> and I've been negotiating my way through phase four of the uh, of the protocol, um, and some really interesting things have come out of it, both um, for myself and also what I'm seeing from other people I know that have uh, that are on phase four and are sticking with it, and other people have gone, well, I've lost the weight now. Um, I know what to do. I'll just be healthy from now on and and see you later. Yeah. Um, and for myself, it's been a matter of the context, not the, when you, when, when we, most people first go into it and because it's like so many other, not that this is, but it feels like it's just another diet at some stage, you know, that's, that's the pretext. And now I've finished that and there is this, yes, I'm eating healthier, which I am a lot, but, there's also this underlying, but I'm off the diet part of it now. Yeah. So, you know, um, I can eat this today or Sundays were my day where I could just eat anything I wanted anyway. So I'm home watching bike racing on TV and whatever. So, and even then it wasn't as, it hasn't been as bad as it used to be. Um, but what I'd found was, especially with the drinking side of stuff, it started to creep back in as there was just, there was just like a, a tipping point of, you know, just started off with just two glasses of wine a night. That was it. And not big glasses, just like, you know, a third of the glasses you got me and <laughs> probably not that much, two glasses. Yeah. A little yeah, that's, that's, that's maximum what I would have Yeah, every couple of days. Yeah. And then it was like, I'd come home and I'd have a really busy day at the workshop or whatever and think, what a bitch of a day. I haven't had a beer for, I'm just going to go grab a beer out of the fridge in the, in the barn. I'd go grab a beer and I sort it, I'll have another one and then I'll have dinner and then, well, I'm having two glasses of wine a night. And that third or fourth drink would just tip you over the edge of, sort it. <laughs> it's, it's gone this far. 
you know, let, let's see what else there is to eat, have a few more drinks and whatever. Um, so I really, I see it's not just you're out the other side now and you're left by yourself to manage yourself and, and just keep it within limits. There is a real tendency and a pull to go back to what was familiar and comfortable for you in the first place. Um, yeah. And, you know, the last, I think the, over the last four or five weeks, I've done one week in phase one again, just to rebalance it, you know, get the system working properly. And um, I found the context for me needs to, you know, in the first three phases, I was like on the money with everything. I was just like, well, they're the rules. This is, this is how I'm playing the game. Yes. But then phase four didn't seem like that. It's sort of just <laughs> left to my own. Uh, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I know what I'm doing now. It's all cool. And then it slowly starts to slip back in, slip back in, slip back in. But I caught it and I've just gone, hang on. There needs to be a, a context of rules set up around still what I can and can't do. Not like hard and fast, this is it, but just a general consensus of, maximum two glasses of wine a night that's it and since doing that it's it doesn't get away from me i just eat what yeah. i eat and and don't want to continue eating after that it's been really good but it, it has been an eye-opener for you know the people i talk to that are coming out of phase three and into phase four of it's cool now i'm fine it, i'm down to where i will be and i'll just keep an eye on everything and yeah you know, you know and then you start hearing about went out and got on it hard and had a bad night. So now I'm on phase one today and, and all that sort of, it's, it's been really eye opening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, a client introduced me to this term uh, a few weeks ago, fatitude. And I laughed like, Oh yeah, fatitude. That's cool. Like I knew what she was talking about. Mm. And then I stopped myself and I thought, no, don't be so arrogant. What would you know? You've never been fat. <laughs> right. So I asked her, I said, look, I've got my ideas of what that means, but you, you know, why don't you tell me? And she goes, come on, you experience it all the time with your clients, you know, very, they're overly demanding, they're very impulsive, everything's emotionally driven, they think they know better. It's kind of general fatitude that people have, right? And yep. it's a, it's a, it's a, look, it, you've got however many years of being and acting that way. And then it's pretty naive to think that you can be on this dietary protocol. And look, it seems like a long time, but not really. When you lose two to three kilograms every week and you hit your target weight, like it's just miraculous. So, you know, I've got a coaching a guy down in Melbourne at the moment and he, what, he was 88 kilograms or something. And, and I said, what would be your ideal weight? And he said, you know, Look, ideally 65, but if I can get down to like 73 and I said, hang on a minute, you just said 65, you know, and people always go for, you know, they, there's what they really want in life, but then you go for what you think you can have and people never really go for what they want. And I said, that's the breakthrough opportunity for you. Now he's, he's 70.7 70 kilograms. And 65 occurs for him is totally doable. All he's got to do is just keep following the design. Mm. And he's a new human being. I get on the phone to him and he's alive. He's, he sounds like really on point. He's grown up, um, really powerful in his speaking. I mean, he was a whinging, whining bitch the first three weeks. It was, <laughs> take, it takes everything to, to coach people in the beginning. And then there's like, you know, you just got to keep them on track. And then what happens is... You start to think that you've got it handled and people get sloppy towards the end. Yeah. And, you know, if you think about a marathon, that's where the race is lost. When people get sloppy with their breathing and they get sloppy with their technique and those that finish strong, it's not that they've just got such great heart that's pulled them through over the finish line is they have the discipline to, to regulate their breathing because you've got to, oxygenate the muscles and so if you don't breathe you see it with fighters and boxers and everything as well you know you see how they fight and they 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 manage their bursts of um activity to 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 endure the length of the fight right 
so they're smart in that sense and you see them breathing it was a recent fight and you could see the guy in the seventh round is like his mouth was open he was panting you know you just know he's gonna lose mm. right and and they get sloppy with their technique whether it's running or boxing or whatever it is and you see it with people on this protocol as well mm. and they stop doing the things that they were doing that got them to that point and then that last five percent when they can see the finish line it's like in a dream where you're approaching the finish line and it's like the far the harder you try to get there it's like the longer that that distance stretches out to be and and that's where people stop being and acting with integrity mm. and you know you stop little things like they stop measuring the vegetables or stop taking the supplements as they so they know to and the, the one of the first things that goes out of existence is they stop being coachable mm. but there's this pretense that oh no, no i'm very coachable it's like really i haven't heard from you for two weeks <laughs> not in my books and then i have to as a coach you've got to and this is some coaching for you you've got to ramp up the intensity mm. whenever they get you know whenever they're like oh no i've got this trevor i'm like no it's so easy I, i've got it it's like really i haven't seen your your meal diary you've stopped performing the way that you were that got you to this point mm. and the importance of that degree of integrity it seems like full on but listen you know i'm coaching people that have never had any power around their health their weight their entire freaking life like they've never been, they're getting to weights that they haven't been at since they were 18 to 21 years of age. Mm. They've had no power and no one's been able to make any difference to them. And then they come and they get in this. And I, I, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and she's been coached up the yin yang by the, the best transformational coaches in the world. And I had one conversation with her and she was just com completely floored by what was possible and and what was actually in the way and who she was being, her view of herself and the stories that she trafficked in. And, you know, that you've got brain patterns that drive you to the fridge and cause you to eat stuff that you know not to eat, even though you know and you've committed and you've promised and you still find yourself stuffing your face. It's like, what the heck is it going to take? <laughs> well, here's what it takes. It takes being committed not just yourself, but inside a, 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 a powerful, effective, proven coaching structure and model. Mm. And otherwise it's like, and, but it gets to the point where it occurs as easy to them. And, and, you know, people share on Facebook and they look fabulous and they get all this uh, praise from everyone and blah, blah, blah. And no one reaches out to me and says, thank you for saving my friend's <laughs> life. Like, I don't get calls from parents saying, oh my God, I was terrified. And look, I know like their parents are terrified of their children dying from a heart attack before they have a chance to go first. Mm. You know, the harsh reality is two thirds of the adult population are at least overweight. This, this younger generation is, is predicted to be the first generation not to live as long as the generation before, mm -hmm. primarily because of the obesity epidemic. And, and people think that this is about weight loss. No, this is about a, a complete and total transformation in who you are as a human being. And what you're dealing with now is putting to practice the ways of being and acting that you started to develop in phases one to three mm. that's just your ticket in going through phases one to three is just your ticket into phase four phase four is the whole goddamn point mm. it's not just about losing the weight you want to lose the weight there's just many ways to do that but when if you can do it in the most rapid healthful way that leaves you with the right hormonal profile that most empowers you to sustain those results long term then that's where the rubber hits the road in phase four. And that's where you got to learn to regulate yourself. It's a lot of self parenting. Mm. You know, when you, you're yeah. looking after kids, you got to make, you got to make sure that they have breakfast. You make sure that they have a, a decent lunch. You make sure that they, you know, if they're hungry before dinner, you monitor what they have and you make sure that what they have is appropriate. And it's like an appropriate time before dinner. And, 
You don't just let them have whatever they want an hour before dinner. You're saying, no, dinner's going to be in an hour. You'll wait. And, and you've got to do that with yourself. And it's like, how do I manage myself as an adult where, where even when you've got the freedom of choice in phase four, how do you have your baseline nutrition so rock solid and foundational where you're still present to and enjoy the, the, the joys of life, but your health is like, it's like when you brush your, you brush brush your teeth every day. It's weird when you don't, when you don't brush your teeth in the morning, you can't wait to get home and brush your teeth. You're conscious of it all day. You're like, you know, yeah. and your health and nutrition has got to be like that, mm. you know, with that degree of integrity, but it's like handled and that takes time to practice that. You know, it, it's when you said the parenting thing. That was, uh, uh, that rang true straight away. It was like, it has been lots of conversations with myself about parenting myself not to not to do that it's a lot of yeah you got to say no a lot mm. until yeah. it's just you don't do it you know and and, and it's not did like I it's tell you about the did i tell you about the thing i read in the book you lent me um a while ago i think i did about the um the thing he'd gotten out of the zen buddhism side of stuff and also how it related to physics with the every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Yes. And when I when I when I finished that part of the book, I walked away and I think I was training um, not soon after, or I put the book down to go and train. And I noticed myself getting to some exercises where there was a lot, because it's like a random sort of exercise thing I do. And then some of the things I was showing up, it was just like, oh crap, I hate that. Why am I getting so many of those cards? And then it hit me. As much as I hate those cards, I love those cards. As much as I don't want to do this, I must also want to do it equally as much. Purely by the laws of physics or yin and yang or whatever you want to call it, you know. So that just flipped everything on its head as far as the experience of doing stuff. And when I brought that to the, you know, sitting at home at night, watching bike racing on or football on TV, two glasses of wine thinking Moz will have another one. Lan's going to have a Moscato when she comes home anyway. So I'll, I'll have a glass <laughs> of wine with her and then going, hang on as much as I want that glass of wine, I also don't want it because let's face it after you have it and or you eat yourself stupid or you do whatever you end up not, you, you wish you'd hadn't have done it anyway, but just yeah. that, in that experience of as much as I, as much as that's calling to me to go get it and I really want it, I also don't want it. It flips it. I'm just like, wow, just lost yeah. a grip on me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a client ask me, it's like, how do you deal with when you just, you're really craving it and it's right there in front of you. And I said, just ask yourself two questions. What, what will happen if you don't have it? <laughs> like in reality, just in actuality, what will happen if you don't have it? Not much, right? Mm -hmm. Now ask yourself this question, what will happen if you do? Mm. And you start to kind of get a sense of, man, is it really worth it? Same sort of thing, right? What will happen if I don't have it? I'll just keep wanting it. And what will happen if I do? I wish I hadn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's not even just that you'll keep wanting it. It's you, the experience of who you are for yourself. Yeah. The integrity, it's, here's the integrity in a nutshell. Everyone, you know, wants that kind of power that operating with integrity makes available. And it's, it, it's not even from a world of morality, like what's good and right and just. And no, that that's morality. Integrity is all about workability. So if, when you operate with integrity, then things are workable. Or when there's integrity in a system or a structure or a process, then things are workable. And when things are workable, then you or it or whatever can perform at a high level. Right? So it's always inside a context of performance. But why would you want to perform at a high level? Well, because it really matters to you. Mm. So integrity is only as important as that which matters or that what you're up to matters to you. 
So mm -hmm. it keeps truing yourself up to like, who am I as a commitment? What am I really here for? And, you know, as a, I think that's beautiful what you just pointed to that was in that book and, and Dr. Tran speaks about that, that balance. And as a coach, you're, even when people complain, I've got to tell you, people complain a lot. That's all people do. Everything's a complaint. Everything, the, the, the look on people's faces, their posture <laughs> is a complaint, right? Everything's a complaint. You know, people aren't free. It's ridiculous. They're complaining all the time. And they're, 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 the layers of fat that, that people put on, uh, does, there's like a, often they're layers of protection from the threat that life is. And it's like opt out or, you know, I could go on for hours about that, but look, you got to have a breakthrough in all of that. You got to realize it's not, it's not that you've got to get better at surviving life. No, you got to discover that whatever you've been threatened by isn't real. Yeah. And all the fear and anxiety and all, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, so when you're coaching people, it's, I don't care if they complain, you know, complain the whole way it doesn't bother me it's like so long as you act the way you're supposed to act because that's all the universe responds to is action or inaction not well-meaning intentions and you know good people and all these positive thoughts and no it's do what you said by when you said you would do it not oh but i i just felt like i was okay and i didn't need to do it. it's like don't nothing listen you're not qualified to think yet until you go through this whole thing and you were masterful in phases one to three and then in phase four, it's getting a bit sloppy. So we're gonna take going back, that opportunity to go back into phase one, we're gonna take that off the table for you mm. for a period of time. And you're gonna discover what it looks like to regulate yourself without that morning after pill, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and there's nothing wrong. This is just part of what, phase four looks like this is part of the training and it's different for everyone you know phase one to three it's pretty much the same for everyone but then phase four it, it takes a bit more to kind of work with people and find that point of neutrality so you understand it takes a bit more intellectual effort takes a bit more discipline staying on point you can't just relax and think that things are handled and sit on a rock and meditate no you know that would be like gandhi I don't know, transforming when he got thrown out of the train in South Africa and then going, oh, I, uh, you know, realizing whatever he realized, but then not expressing himself beyond that to contribute and make a difference to himself and others, right? You, you can't do that. So, you know, that that's going to be phase four. And otherwise, it, I mean, it turns into, I was thinking about this today, actually. So, Years ago, I used to um, work for a, a pharmaceutical company, a big um, pharma company, one of the biggest in the world. And I, I left the lab. I, I was a lab rat in academia and just got really jaded with that. And then I thought, I'm going to pharma. That's where the that's where it really is happening. And you know, I was wrong. But anyway, <laughs> so I was. <laughs> Working in pharma, I was managing a, the diabetes portfolio in the southwest area of Sydney. And I mean, chronic disease prevalence is just so high in that area. And it's like socioeconomic. I mean, obesity primarily is, is a disease of poverty, but not like, um, like a poverty way of being and acting mm. like a victim. If you, you know, I'm not saying that people in poverty, are, 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 it's just that they're being victims. No, it's, it's like, it's, it's a condition that people get stuck in. And, and you know, the, often English isn't the primary language. And, and then the environment is set up to take full advantage of this. You got fast food joints on every bloody corner. It's like these people have no chance. Like it, it's, it's such a, you know, societal issue and type two diabetes is rampant. And anyway, we used to promote this drug called Avandia and it was a, what we call a, um, a glitazone, a thiazolidine dione. So basically it, it helps to um, 
increased sensitivity of your tissues to insulin and therefore helps to lower your blood glucose levels. So as people progress, they become, they develop metabolic syndrome, they're overweight, their blood pressure's up, et cetera, and you're on your way to becoming type 2 diabetic. And it's, it's not a pretty thing if you're a type 2 diabetic. You know, people think, oh, you can control diabetes with diet. And it's, yeah, but it's, it's like a really, the kind of stuff that you went through, it's a real nutritional intervention. Mm. I mean, that's what it, this is that I do. I intervene um, and, and really sort things out and reverse that whole process biochemically, but also who you are as a human being. Anyway, this drug was so effective at lowering blood glucose levels. Um, and I did really well successfully with that drug, but then it got to the point where the doctors were like, yeah, I don't like prescribing it anymore, Dean. I'm like, why not? It's effective, right? And he's like, yeah, but then the patients think that they can eat whatever they want. Yeah. And so then the doctors were stuck in this moral dilemma. Mm. You know, yes, we want to... You know, we want to decrease the parameters that could potentially lead to, you know, dangerous outcomes, but then at, at, to what end? It's just encouraging people to continue eating however they want. And, and none of them were ever able to alter the lifestyle, the behavior of their patients. And, you know, that's what we're doing here at Simpler Health. You know, it's, it's the whole point. Yeah. And I see that, especially with the, the people that you've been interviewing. You know, I love watching that after you post it and I watch them and I'm always nervous because, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, I create something and then I kind of give it away and, and then I'm like, oh, sh you know, is it, is it on point? But it, it always is. And the way that they're expressing themselves is just so sourceful and you're bringing that out of them as well. And, you know, so that that's so rare and it's uncommon and it's, it, it's, it's, you know, in my view, it's miraculous. Mm. You know, people, a lot of these people just haven't had any power around their health and vitality. And all of a sudden they're doing something on point without deviating for many, many, many weeks until they lose 20, 30, 35, 40 kilograms. It's like unheard of. And people say, you know, surely you must have deviated and had some pizza once. And they're like, no. Nah. <laughs> How, how is that even possible? I know. You know that, so you have to have a transformation first. It's got to be the appropriate person doing the, the program. And it may not even be you right now, but that's what happens in the early stages. And then you get committed and then it's, you see the results week on week. And that's what's really motivating as well. And it, it sustains your longevity on the pro, in the process. But then in phase four, it's, it's like you got to, it's kind of like going through school, you know, you, you, you get the basics in primary school and then you're given a little bit of independence in high school. And then if you leave high school and you think, oh yeah, I've made it in life. Yeah. You know, some people do, and but they work hard, man. They're disciplined right from the get-go. And they, and but there are others that just, you know, they might go to university, but then they, 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 they don't develop themselves as adults in university and then university just becomes this opportunity for an extended adolescence mm. and then you get people 35 still living at home trying to figure out how do I you know wash my underwear in the washing machine like you know what I mean of course they don't know how to look after their health and well-being yeah so phase four is where you really like I said the rubber hits the road and that's where you, you get to learn how do I plan a week ahead mm. and then act true to that plan? And you don't get to act any way other than what you've planned. If you want to act some other way, well, too bad, so sad. You should have put it in the bloody plan. <laughs> and you, and you, you learn how to deal with that. And you, and you get past phases and you kind of, on the other side, you realise, oh, it wasn't such a big deal. No, <clears throat> I've been sort of realising that anyway. It's it's it really isn't there just there's just got to be parameters there for me i'm not saying that's for everyone there's just has to be parameters there like a set of rules for me all the time left to my own devices where it's it's all good <laughs> i just run them up i mean i i had to wake up to that myself recently i had um had my blood work done several weeks ago 
uh, with my doctor. And anyway, we, it took him ages. He didn't call me. I'm like, where's my blood work? And anyway, I went in, saw him and we're going through my blood work. And, you know, it's amazing. My HDL cholesterol's up here and my triglycerides are down here. And he turned to me, he's like, well, you're not dying of heart disease. Like, let, <laughs> what, else, what are you going to die from like this? So we're going through my blood work, trying to figure out what I'm going to die from. But there were a few, and it all looked great, except there were a few uh, anomalies that just were a little bit higher than anticipated. Well, I was like, what's with these numbers? Anyway, he couldn't make sense of it. And, you know, thank goodness in Simpler Health, we've got that scientific advisory uh, team. And, and I rang uh, my metabolic disease expert in, in San Diego. He's a world-leading obesity scientist. And anyway, I went through the blood work numbers with him. Anyway, he, he, he said, you know, when did you get the bloods taken? I told him and he goes, so, and you were in lockdown for a couple of months prior to that. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, and you have like an endless supply of this resveratrol enhanced wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like this. He's like, how much have you been drinking, dude? And I said to him, oh, you know couple of glasses a day and he goes like one to two or three to four like this and you know it's be tell the truth and look back it was like yeah it's like sometimes it's a bit more it's like yep. three glasses right and he goes you, you got to stop that and i'm like come on man that's me that's moderation dr norrie <laughs> says when people ask what's moderation, he says a bottle of wine a day shared between two people with men having slightly more than women, right? And he goes, yeah, that's true, but you're Asian, dude. <laughs> he goes, I've seen you drink. <laughs> he goes, you got you to gotta cut that right back. So now I have a, a glass every two days, you know, and I've got to listen and I've, got to, I've just got to do it. Mm. You know, it's not that I'm so enlightened and, you know, I've got stuff figured out. No, I'm a bloody dirty rat like everybody else and I've got to regulate myself. And, you know, that's why if you come to my place and you, you look in my cupboards, I don't have junk food. I don't have all the snack food and all that. Why? Because I don't buy it. Why don't I buy it? Because I don't freaking trust myself. If I've got it here, I'm going to eat it. Mm. So at least I'm smart enough just not to have it in my vicinity. Yeah. Right? So we all need to be adult about managing this skin bag we can't leave the management of this adult aging body up to a juvenile brain that just wants to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it mm. thinking that oh i know what i'm doing now and you know i mean you tune motorbikes right imagine if you put all that work into i don't know what what's a i don't know anything about motorbikes but what's no, a, i'm what's gonna a, say where are you going with this let's go yeah yeah what, what what's a yeah you're like, all right let's see how dumb dean is when it comes to this stuff well what what's you tell me what's a really like high-end phenomenal motorbike oh this it's, it's gonna be depends who you ask but uh, i mean you know any any um thousand cc sports bike these days out of japan or italy or anywhere they're highly right. highly developed very fast very light precise yeah. instruments yeah. now imagine imagine if someone came to you with one of them and what's the worst thing that they could put in the petrol tank like if they were putting some cheap ass petrol and shit oil in or whatever they were doing right you would you'd go, what the heck? Are you? you don't deserve to have this machine. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so you people have to learn like what it looks like to look after this thing, mm. this machine. If you, if you got some, you wouldn't put, if you got like this, and, and not just that it's a high-end machine, like, you know, a, a car or something which is probably more accessible to most people <laughs> so if you got like a you know 400 500 thousand dollar car and worse it's borrowed it's not even yours mm. you're not going to drive it in a 7-eleven and put e10 in the petrol tank <laughs> right you're not going to throw your, your your mcdonald's wrapper on the floor of that car you're going to get it serviced when it, the service is due you're going to drive it in a particular way Sometimes you've got to drive it hard. Sometimes you've got to take it easy where it's appropriate. You can't be silly with it, right? Mm. And 
but people don't treat their body like that. You only get one of these. Yeah. You know, and people abuse it and disrespect it. And, you know, it's to be looked after, but it's also to be enjoyed. But mm. you can't fully enjoy it unless you look after it. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, and that that's where, you know, we calibrate things in phases one to three and then phase four, it's like, let it rip, but you got to learn how to maintain and look after this thing appropriately for high performance. Yeah. And that takes integrity. Yeah, for sure. So phase one's off the table for you for three weeks. And, and then, look, it'll be great. You'll discover what it takes to kind of, okay, the thinking. I've sort of been, discovering, I've, I've sort of been discovering along the way anyway. Um, and like what I've been saying before about those, having those parameters still there, like it's still not handled. Um and then I was going to go, okay, now, now I'm being responsible for those old ways of being and drinking and stuff and eating. Then now I'll hit phase one for a few weeks and then carry on from there. But that's cool. I can go without phase one and do it that way. Of course way. you can. You, you set the standards, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't. Like I'm saying, it's just, it's just, it would have been quicker doing that. But I'm, I'm happy to do it this way because it frees me up a little bit as well but it also has me in that management mode as well. Yeah. Yeah. And Lana will be happier too. Oh, will she? <laughs> She's only got to cook one meal for nine people instead of four meals for two. <laughs> right. You got to be responsible for that environment. And, that, and I think that's one of the biggest breakthroughs that anyone could have on their journey with me or, or us, you know, coaching them is discovering for themselves that that this body doesn't belong to them mm. it belongs to the people that love you it belongs to the the commitments that you're up to fulfilling on in life it belongs to the communities you serve yeah and and you want to be it you want to be up to creating a big life right and then your body this machine has to be in the the right condition to fulfill on that kind of a life mm. you know so every, everyone wants to you know people want the the health and the vitality that they think that they deserve for their own body but they don't want to create a bigger expanded fuller life and your body and and your the life that you're up to are perfectly correlated perfectly in a dance with each other and so you got to create bigger commitments and then this thing has to follow suit is you know you got to remind your body that it works for you mm. not you being at the effect of it and the yeah. aging process and all of that yeah yeah and yeah when you said about your, your body doesn't belong to you it, it sort of hit me in a different because i mean i got that conceptually but then you know i was up last week helping my son with um putting ceiling panels up in a shop they're opening up in maitland and that's a prime example of, you know, I'm nearly 50 years old and I'm there helping my son with this body, putting, do, getting something that he's committed to getting up and running and, and making, you know, run properly. And he's 27, 28. And, yeah. you know, I'm nearly 50 putting these really heavy panels up into a ceiling. And, and like, they were, it was startling to me how, out of breath, how tired, how just wrecked they were halfway through the day. And I'm still just, what's wrong with you dudes? Let's keep it. But that off point a little bit, the, the point was that my body is there. I'm just, you know, in my head, I'm just there helping my son do that. But if, yes. if, if my body's not up to that task, how am I expected to do that without keeling mm -hmm. over and, you know, <laughs> or just not being able to help anyway because I'm too big or my knees are too sore or yeah that's great it's 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 not just it's not enough just to try and survive your own life mm. it's how do you how do you get that stuff somewhat handled such that you can cause a breakthrough in participation in life and not just to get up to stuff for yourself but to be so present and well 
you're now available to participate in the lives of others mm. and, and support them to fulfill on what they're committed to. Then your life expands, you know, that's, that's the whole point. I mean, in the end, it, it, look, it all ends the same dirt in your face or a fire up your ass, like whatever. A few people come and say some nice things about you at best, but you know, up until that point, you know, how big a life could you live? Mm. So, I mean, it's just simple. Yeah, it's awesome. I spoke to a few people this week. It's as simple as watching their, you know, especially if they've got young kids running around at the beach and they, you know, dad or mum come play with me and come do this and come do that. And they just haven't been able to. Yeah. <laughs> we just sit on a towel or, you know, sit under the shade and have a barbecue and let the kids just go do what they want. I know. I mean, my daughter's got me doing cartwheels now. God, um, it hurts. I didn't realize like, oh my God, my body's like, okay. And she's just constantly doing cartwheels everywhere. And so now I'm trying to learn how to do cartwheels without <laughs> killing myself or breaking my hip or something. <laughs> Freaking scary. I didn't think how scary it would be, right? And flipping yourself around like that. But I want to be able to do those things. Mm. You know, I, I, I want to. And yeah, you want, you want to participate. You want to be there available for people and you want to be inspired and just be a yes to stuff as well. I mean, you know, I've had to, even, even just the past week or so, like little, little things, like when you just say yes and just be open to stuff, it's like I had a client come around and she was, I was asking her about the, the variety of her diet and her meals and everything. She goes, oh, you know, I'm loving cooking with my air fryer. <laughs> right and i'm like i don't get these bloody air fryers what's the point it's like you know you've got an oven that's three times the size of it you know fan force oven what's the big deal that heats up to the same temperature etc and she's like no no no, it's not the same i'm like all right explain it to me because i don't get it what the heck is the appeal with these air fryers anyway she didn't talk about the air fryer at all all she talked about was this meal that she cooked in it this chicken and anyway i got so inspired by her talking about this bloody meal that she made I went out that afternoon and got myself an air fryer. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's amazing. <laughs> I was so excited. Uh, and then I had to regulate myself. I was so excited to cook with it. I cooked so much food that night and I'm like, I've got to stop eating this stuff. <laughs> so, what else could I make in an air fryer? I know, it was like that. But it's, you know, that's a silly example of just being open to something and giving it a go and you know, here I was thinking, oh, what a stupid idea and thinking I knew better and what's the point and it just, you know, why not? Mm. Why not? Why not? So, Indeed. Yeah. Good question. Why not? All right. Yeah, man. Might leave it there for this week. Thanks for joining me again. It's been a while. Let's not make oh, it. Oh, I've missed it. Next time. I've, I've missed it, man. There's, there's so much more to share and like in terms of even what I've had to deal with in my well-being and some coaching that I've got for myself that's made an enormous difference to my life and, and how I express myself. This is just in recent weeks. So maybe on the next one, you know, we yeah, can share yeah, about not. that and um, I'll get those scientists on a Zoom chat thing as well and chew yeah. the fat with them. That'd yeah. be cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in. Hope there was something in that for you. And uh, we'll see you next week for another episode of Chewing the Fat. See you guys. Bye.